Good morning, and welcome to the historic Church of St. Patrick. We are so glad you have joined us today to help us celebrate the 160th anniversary of the first mass of, mass of our parish, which was held February 1st, 1863 on the Feast of St. Bridget. Our journey is historic. The theme of our 160 year celebration for one of Toledo's most iconic Catholic churches located in downtown Toledo on Avondale, the historic church of St. Patrick. With the Civil War raging, Irish Catholics in Northwest Ohio chose to establish their home place high atop Lanks Hill, sign and symbol of faith in God and trust in the American experiment to provide for their needs and those of generations to come. That blending of faith and civic trust continues to charge the parish at the historic church of St. Patrick and leads us to pause this year from our historic journey to reflect on the past and prepare for the future as we celebrate 160 years as part of the greater community of Toledo. Over those 16 decades, the parish has provided both city and state leadership Contributions to the city include noted professors, teachers, doctors, and lawyers, all of whom form part of our historic journey. Our church has been host to, to many of the most notable citizens of Toledo, to governors, regional and national politicians from every party, as well as churchmen from across the nation and foreign lands. Please join in our celebration by making plans to attend one or more of our events to mark this important point in our history. Taken together, they form a unique opportunity to recall the many men and women of the past who assisted us in making Toledo a great city to celebrate the vibrant and living community which serve the needs of its neighbors and to look forward to the accomplishments yet to be made as we continue our historic journey. You'll find save the date cards in the pews. Contributions to the Preservation Society make it possible for us to continue to be a symbol and sign of faith for generations to come. Thank you.
Welcome and happy St. Bridget's Feast Day and a happy 160th anniversary to historic St. Patrick's Church from the Ancient Order of Hibernians and the Ladies' Ancient Order of Hibernians here in Toledo and across the United States and the world. Most people are aware of St. Bridget- Patrick's Feast Day on March 17th, Ireland's second most beloved saint, St. Bridget. Her feast day is February 1st. Bridget is associated with many miracles related to healing, and it is fitting that the day to commemorate her is also the traditional first day of spring in Ireland. Part of the celebration for the feast of St. Bridget is to bring up the gifts of St. Bridget. St. Bridget's statue, the statue of St. Bridget is carried at the head of the procession to invoke a blessing upon all of us. The flags. The flags represent allegiance to our church, our country, and to our motherland. A candle. The candle is a symbol of our faith, nurtured in Ireland throughout history and brought to America. St. Bridget's Cross. Just as the shamrock is associated with St. Patrick, so is the cross, made of rushes, associated with St. Bridget. Her cross has been described aptly as symbolic of the deep, simple faith of the Irish people. The cross is hung on the door as protection against fire, storms, epidemics, and evil spirits. A food basket, the basket of food, is a symbol of charity and the willingness to share with our brothers and sisters in faith so that they may have freedom from want. It also symbolizes a blessing on all those who till the soil. There's the bride's brat. The brat is a piece of linen or ribbon hung outside the door on St. Bridget's Eve and saved throughout the year as a source of a healing power. It's believed that St. Bridget traveled about blessing homes. There's cakes, breads, and butter that were left on the windowsills. A sheath of corn was left for her white cow and flowers, the dandelion, daffodil, or yellow spring flowers are known as St. Bridget's flowers because they are the flowers of springtime. Welcome and happy St. Pat- Bridget's Feast Day.
with every grace in Peace forevermore till with a vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed then the church victorious shall be the church at rest. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. It is a joy to be with you this morning to celebrate this special Mass, the 160th anniversary of St. Patrick's Parish. This is my first time here seeing this beautiful historic St. Patrick's Church. And since my Catholic roots are Irish, I feel very much at home. And I thank Monsignor Vasco. I didn't know Vasco was an Irish name. <laughs> Monsignor, uh, for the in kind invitation to be here today. I don't know how you have a Hungarian Polish pastor, but I think he's Irish at heart. Um, thank you, Monsignor. And by the way, I spent last night with, uh, at the residence of Bishop Thomas, and he's a friend of mine. We were in school together. So uh, he sends his warm greetings to all of you and wishes he could be here. He has another commitment, but he showed me great hospitality last night and cooked a wonderful Italian dinner so, for me. So that was very nice. And you might wonder, well, I didn't even tell you who I am, but you might have seen Bishop Kevin Rhodes, Bishop of Fort Wayne, South Bend. What's my connection? Well, the first Bishop of Fort Wayne, John Henry Lors, came from Cincinnati. Actually, he was born in Germany, but came and was a priest in Cincinnati before he became Bishop of Fort Wayne. Bishop Lors is the one who laid the cornerstone of the first St. Patrick Church here and also celebrated um, the first mass. So that's why the Bishop of Fort Wayne South Bend is celebrating this mass for you today. So we give thanks to God for all the blessings of the past 160 years. We pray for all of your ancestors in the faith here at St. Patrick's Parish, and we also pray for all of you, your parish family today, that you will continue the beautiful mission um, of your ancestors. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
Lord Jesus, you raised up the lowly and restored sight to the blind. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you blessed the poor in spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, mercy. have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to our great reward in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Down on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice, seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pastor and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Yes. 
sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The King of heaven is blessed. The fatherless and the widow the Lord sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, who is I on through all generations, alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. 
And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing. You may be seated. The gospel today recounts the heart of the preaching of Jesus, the Beatitudes. They are a sort of self-portrait of Jesus, a depiction of Jesus who was poor in spirit, meek, pure of heart, and merciful. He was persecuted and reviled. All the things we read about in the Beatitudes, they apply to Jesus. And they are an invitation to us, his disciples, to put on the mind and heart of Christ, to live in communion with him by possessing these dispositions of our Lord. Humility, meekness, mercy, purity of heart, etc. And when we do, we are blessed. We find true human fulfillment and authentic happiness. And most importantly, we receive the blessing and the rewards that Jesus promised. Life in the kingdom of heaven, seeing God face to face, communion with Jesus and the saints in heaven, which is our ultimate end and perfect happiness. We can have a taste of that eternal joy of heaven here on earth when we live the Beatitudes. For 160 years, the parishioners here at St. Patrick's have learned the Beatitudes of Jesus. They have been nourished by the sacraments to live the Beatitudes. The first parishioners back in the 1860s Mostly poor and hardworking Irish immigrants sacrificed much to build this parish under the leadership of your first pastor, who himself was an immigrant from Ireland during the potato famine, Father Edward Hannon. Father Hannon and your ancestors in the faith here at St. Patrick's believed that God put us in the world to know, to love, and to serve him and to come to paradise. They sought to live this truth. Their strong faith motivated them to build the first St. Pat Patrick Church in 1862. And when that church deteriorated and became unsafe 28 years later, Father Hannon and faith-filled parishioners undertook the challenging task of building a new church for the honor and glory of God, this historic and beautiful Church of St. Patrick. Now, you may have wondered, as I said at the beginning of Mass, why the Bishop of Fort Wayne South Bend is celebrating this Mass today. 
And as I mentioned, it's because my predecessor, the first bishop of the Diocese of Fort Wayne, the German-born John Henry Lures, laid the cornerstone of the first St. Patrick Church here on this very site, and a year later celebrated the first mass in that first church, in the Feast of St. Bridget. Um, Monsignor Vasco can correct any historical inaccuracies, but I worked hard on trying to find the history. Uh, but I don't real, I, I really didn't know why the, the Bishop of Fort Wayne was invited because this was part of the Diocese of Cleveland at that time. Um, and, you know, so why did, and I think um, Monsignor Vasco can tell you why later. But I do know that Bishop Lors and Cleveland's first bishop, French-born Bishop Louis Rappe, both served in Cincinnati before they became bishops. So maybe they were friends. Um, perhaps Bishop Rappi invited Bishop Lors to bless the cornerstone. I don't think he would have come here without the Bishop of Cleveland's permission. Um, in any event, I'd like to share with you a little bit about Bishop Lors because he's connected to the very beginning of your parish and also about his impressions of Toledo. John Henry Lors became the first bishop of Fort Wayne in 1857. That's when the Diocese of Fort Wayne was established. It wasn't, and, and it was taken from the Diocese of Vincennes. Vincennes covered the whole state of Indiana and the western or eastern third of Illinois. So, um, so they took the whole northern half of the state of Indiana and made the Diocese of Fort Wayne in 1857. Later, the dioceses of Lafayette and Gary were created from the Diocese of Fort Wayne. But originally, we were the whole northern half of Indiana. So when Bishop Lures arrived in Fort Wayne from Cincinnati, he became very depressed. Because, and he wrote, well, in, that whole, in the whole diocese, like 41 count, 42 counties, the whole northern half. He said, there's only about 18,000 Catholics in this whole area. They're all spread out, and it's, it's mostly an agricultural diocese. There's little money, so what am I to do? There's only this wooden church in Fort Wayne. Like, he, he was just like, what do I do? I, and he had 11 priests, that's it. And there was anti-Catholicism, so there were all these problems. And Fort Wayne was such a small city. The Catholics there were, were poor French and German immigrants, and some of the Miami Indian tribe were Catholic. And so Bishop Lors didn't think that Fort Wayne was suitable to be the seat of the diocese. So he asked to have it moved to Lafayette, which he thought must have been a little bit bigger, and he thought it'd be better on the west side of Indiana. And his request was denied. Then he tried to move the seat of the diocese to Indianapolis. Now, the seat of that, di that was already still the Diocese of Vincennes, the southern half of the state. It hadn't even moved to Indianapolis yet. So he wanted them to like carve out Indianapolis and give it to him. So that would be the seat of the diocese. Again, the request was denied. The poor guy, you know, like he didn't want to be in Fort Wayne, but and he lamented, okay, he was like, okay, I need like a large urban Catholic community that can fund diocesan projects and we need some people with money so that we can start building churches and everything. So he was rather miserable about this situation. And then he came to Toledo. This is why it, this connects to you. Came here and he was so impressed. He, the, it had more businesses than Fort Wayne, I think because of the lake and they had shipping and whatever. It had more Catholics. At that time, Toledo had 5,000 Catholics and three parishes among a population of 20,000. So it was a good bit bigger than Fort Wayne. And he said, Toledo's gonna grow. You know, he saw the, that this is destined to grow. So he was really infatuated with Toledo. So then he tried to get Archbishop Purcell of Cincinnati to redraw the diocesan boundaries of Cleveland and Fort Wayne so that Toledo 
and the northwestern corner of Ohio would become part of the Diocese of Fort Wayne. Maybe that's why he came here to St. Patrick's, because he was trying to... Anyhow, Archbishop Purcell of Cincinnati basically told Bishop Lors, stop. Stop thinking about such ideas. You know, he had asked him about Lafayette, then Indianapolis, then Toledo. He said, you need to resign yourself to the will of providence. And so both Archbishop Purcell of Cincinnati and Bishop Rappe of Cleveland were against Toledo becoming part of the Diocese of Fort Wayne. Now, I told Bishop Thomas last night that I think it would have been a good idea that, you know, that I would love to have Toledo in my diocese, I said to him. He said, he said Bishop Rhodes, if you do that, I'm going to become a hermit. So uh, <laughs> it seems that after this, Bishop Lures left behind his dreams of escaping from Fort Wayne. And he got to work on building the beautiful Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in Fort Wayne in 1860. And he built churches and schools throughout northern Indiana. And he was actually a very good bishop after he became resigned to accepting his situation. But he still felt connected to and liked Toledo, which is, I imagine, one of the reasons that he came here to lay the cornerstone of the first St. Patrick Church in 1862. That was three years after the cornerstone of the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception was laid in Fort Wayne. And by the way, if you ever travel to Fort Wayne, it's only, what, an hour and 45, 50 minutes, please visit the, our beautiful Gothic Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, downtown Fort Wayne. Beautiful like, like your, your church. Now I realize I've shared a lot of history with you in this homily. Like Monsignor Vasco, I love history. It's important that we know and appreciate our history and that we learn from it. And it's connected to our faith. We can be inspired by the example of the strong faith of those who came before us. And I encourage you to embrace your parish's mission of evangelization. The best way for a parish or any of us as Catholics to evangelize is to live the Beatitudes, to bear witness to the life of Jesus. The Second Vatican Council taught that the world cannot be transformed and offered to God without the Beatitudes. And we're all called to be saints. The saints were basically men and women of the Beatitudes. You and I, with the help of God's grace, must strive to be poor in spirit, humble, not prideful. There's no holiness without humility. We're called to be pure of heart, men and women who live in truth and sincerity. We're to be merciful, having genuine love and compassion for the sick, the suffering, and those who are hurting. A truly Catholic parish is a place where not only is God's word proclaimed and the sacraments are celebrated, but also where the corporal and spiritual works of mercy are lived and practiced. And last night, Bishop Thomas told me about some of those works of mercy that you have here at St. Patrick's, so I was really happy to hear about that, your outreach to the poor and the needy. When we live the Beatitudes, we're following the way of Jesus, but also that way is the way of the cross. Jesus predicted persecution for his disciples and that's why he said in the last beatitude, the final beatitude, blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. We must remember this beatitude when we experience in our present culture opposition, ridicule, criticism for our beliefs, for the teachings of the church. In a polarized political climate, we must avoid ideologies that are inimical to our faith and remember that we are 
Catholics, first and foremost, disciples of Jesus Christ, who strive to live the Beatitudes. Our ancestors in the faith, including our immigrant ancestors from Ireland, often faced opposition, prejudice, and discrimination, anti-Catholic hostility, but they remained steadfast in the faith. They were even able to rejoice, like when they built this beautiful church, because they trusted that their reward would be in heaven. May we imitate their faith and trust in the Lord, their fidelity to the church. May God bless you, and may St. Patrick and St. Bridget intercede for you always. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us offer our prayers of petition to God, our merciful Father. For the church, may we seek justice for those persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for those victimized by injustice, and for those whose voices are ignored. Atiarna ish lin. For world leaders, may they lead in a spirit of humility, acknowledging they cannot bring to the world true righteousness and justice on their own. Atiarna ish lin. For all those who teach in Catholic schools, may their lessons be absorbed and retained by eager students. Atiarna Ish Lin. For Bishop Kevin C. Rhodes, may your faith and love for Christ continue to inspire your flock and the Diocese of Fort Wayne South Bend. Atiarna Ish Lin. For the people of the Diocese of Fort Wayne South Bend, may they be blessed with the love and guidance of the Holy Spirit as their lives inspired by Christ. Atiarna Ish Lin. For all the men and women who have belonged to the historic Church of St. Patrick over the years, and for the priests and sisters who have led the parish, may they rest in peace. Atiarna Ish Lin.
Lord God, our Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. We thank you for the gift of our Catholic faith and the gift of the faith of all who have worshiped and served here at historic St. Patrick's. We ask you to answer our prayers, which we offer with faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God and patroness of our sister parish, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Patrick and Bridget, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn this morning is number 477, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 477. Where the 
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. I know that here you certainly honor your patron saint, St. Patrick, the great missionary to Ireland, and, and also today, St. Bridget, another saint that we think of, another Irish saint today, St. Brendan, your new statue of St. Brendan that will be outside the church, and I will bless this statue now. So I see you're devoted to all the Irish saints. Monsignor Vasco, is there a statue or painting of St. Kevin anywhere in the church? St. Kevin? He's not, he, you don't have an image or statue of St. Kevin? Will you work on that? Okay, great. That's wonderful. I'll come back if you have St. Kevin. No, just teasing. But we'll now, um, I'll now bless the statue of St. Brendan. My brothers and sisters, as we begin to celebrate this rite in praise of God, on the occasion of the unveiling of this beautiful new image of St. Brendan the Navigator for public veneration, we must be properly disposed and have a clear appreciation of the meaning of this celebration. When the church blesses a picture or statue and presents it for public veneration by the faithful, it does so for the following reasons that when we look at the representation of those who have followed Christ faithfully, we will be motivated to seek the city that is to come, that we will learn the way that will enable us most surely to attain complete union with Christ, that as we struggle along with our earthly cares, we will be mindful of the saints, those friends and co-heirs of Christ, who are also our own brothers and sisters, and our special benefactors, that we will remember how they love us, are near us, intercede ceaselessly for us, and are joined to us in marvelous communion. Lord, we bless you, for you alone are holy, and because in your compassion for sinners, you send into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the author and protector of holiness. He sent the Spirit to sustain his newborn church, the voice that teaches us the secrets of holiness, a breeze that strengthens and refreshes, a fire that sears our hearts in love, the seed of God that yields a harvest of grace. Today we praise you for the gifts of the Spirit bestowed on Saint Brendan, in whose honor we dedicate this statue. May we follow in the footsteps of the Lord, keeping before us the example of St. Brendan, and grow to a maturity measured not by nature, but by the fullness of Christ. May we proclaim the Gospels by word and deed, and shouldering our crosses each day, expend ourselves for the service of others. As we, count, as we carry out our earthly duties, May we be filled with the Spirit of Christ and keep our eyes fixed on the glories of heaven, where you, Father, receive those who will reign with your Son forever and ever. Amen. And Lord, we ask you to bless this statue and all who pray before it or gaze upon it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the glory and joy of the saints, who has ca caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed through their, their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy ways of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen so that together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint, Saint Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly, we humbly pray. And you, O Thou, Prince, o Prince of, the of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast, cast into hell, hell Satan, Satan and, and all, all the evil spirits who prowl about the world the seeking the ruin of souls. souls. Amen. Amen.